Hi guys, welcome along today, we're back in the workshop. Uh, today we have got Giovanni Dobolina's Ducati 999 S in for a wheel bearing replacement. So here we are guys, here's the bike in the workshop, front wheel's on at the minute. We're just selecting the tools, so we've got some cleaner and a brush to give everything a good clean up once it's all apart. Some new wheel bearings. A bit of threaded bar with some spaces and bits to put it back in with which you'll see and a wheel bearing removal tool. Whilst we're here we're also in the process of doing Giovanni's British cousin Bob's uh, 675 Daytona forks so we've got a few bits and pieces out there so we're going to cover that in a separate video if you're interested in seeing a pair of fork seals and oil change. So anyway with the Ducati first job is to get it up on the stand and get the front wheel out. So the front wheel spindle is a little bit seized in the inner sleeve of the bearings in there. So rather than damaging this too much, gripping it with some mole grips. Mully, 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 mully. We're going to do this brass drift and we're just going to tap it through from the other side. It's important to use something like a brass drift rather than an extension bar as this is a lot softer and won't damage the threads on the end of the axle. And here we have great success, one front axle removed with no damaged threads, no damage to the axle. So if it's the first time you've taken the front wheel out, or the back wheel, it's important to remember where the spaces go, what side and what orientation they're in. So it's always nice to just lay them down by each side they come out of. So now with the front axle, spacers and calipers removed from the wheel, we should be able to remove the front wheel. So guys, here we are, the wheel is out on the bench. So this is your wheel bearing in here with the oil seal around the outside of it. So what we're going to do first is use a pry bar and just gently pop that oil seal out, like so. A lot of grease in here because we've recently had this apart just to check it and re-grease it. This is what it looked like before. So these seals should be renewed but we're still waiting for some to turn up. So we'll pop these back in because they're not actually damaged in any way and when the new ones show up we'll replace them seals. Now to remove the bearing itself with this specific bearing removal tool, these little guys here have got a slot in the end and you have to select the correct size for the bearing. So we can see on here that is far too small. So the largest one we got to near 25mm which we can see is this one here and that fits nicely in the inner race of the bearing. 
We then turn this wheel over, rest this piece on a solid piece of wood and we can drive one of these bars into the slot which will splay it out gripping on the inside of the bearing. We can then take it off a piece of wood and hammer the end of the shaft which should fire the bearing out. So let's have a go at that. As simple as that, we've driven out the old wheel bearing. Same again on the other side, not forgetting to remove your inner sleeve and give that a good clean up so the axle slides nicely through there. One wheel, wheel bearings removed. So now the easiest way to get this tool out of the old bearing is if you place it in a vise with the split horizontal, just nip it up, a copper mallet, or even just twisting it, it comes straight out. And once that's out of that tool, the bearing will just slip back off. Job's a good one. So whilst it's all apart and out of the wheel, just as you get your new bearings, just double check they do fit down your wheel axle before you go putting them into your wheel and then find out they don't fit. And it's nice to give the center spacer a little clean out and just double check that slips nicely on the axle. So hopefully there'll be no hammer involved when we're refitting it. It should just slide straight through. So here we are guys. Luckily we've got this bike ramp with a wheel chock. So we've been able to stand the wheel up in there, all the bearings are out, seals are out, it's all nice and clean and fresh. And this is the homemade bearing puller tool. So we literally feed it through, like so. Don't forget to put the bearing on, new bearing. Then we need a socket or spacer or something that fits the outer race of the bearing just on there but it's smaller than the total outer race of the bearing you don't want to be pushing on the seal part just on that outer race of the bearing there like so we can slip that down selection of washers just to push it on and then spin a nut down so here it is all lined up ready to go this side we've got a big spacer plate pushing against the, the wheel. This side we have the socket on the outer race of the bearing, all nice and square, wound up, just taking the tension, ready to start tightening. This obviously can be done in a conventional hydraulic press, but I don't have one of those to hand, so this is another way to do it. But under any circumstances, do not use a hammer to knock these bearings in, as you could damage the new bearing. Always pull it in nice and gently. So let's have a go. And bearing should pull in nice and smooth with, with minimal force until you feel it go tight and then you know it should be seated home. Just give it a little nip and then you can back it all off and double check it's seated home. So here we can see the bearings fitted nicely. 
just recessed deep enough for the seal to pop in so we know it's fully home and the inner race you can actually feel is against the inner race anyway. If you don't have a large enough socket to fit the outer race of the bearing, you can also use one of the old bearings potentially to push it through, but careful you don't go too far and get it stuck in the wheel with the new bearing, because then you'll have a double bearing set up, which is no good. So that's that side together. Let's spin the wheel round. We don't necessarily have to spin it round, but I'm right-handed, so I prefer it round the other way. And pop the other side together. So critical point here, once you've got one bearing in one side, on the other side, don't forget to put your centre spacer in. If you do, forget to put it in, put your new bearing in, you'll have to bash it back out and potentially damage the new bearing. So always remember to put centre spacer in the wheel, then you're ready to fit your second bearing. Sometimes, just to make sure the bearing does start square, you can give it a little tap, 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 But like I say, you don't want to drive it all the way in because you might damage the bearing. Once you start it nice and square, the original technique should pull it through nice. Try and be nice and smooth when you're pulling it in. If it feels like it's binding up or there's a bit of extra resistance, stop, take it apart and have a look. But if it's nice and smooth like that, just keep winding it in until you feel it sit home. And there we are, second bearing's in, inner race is in there. Just need to refit the dust seals and away we go. So there we go guys, should be ready to go back together. We'll just have one final check with the axle with it all cleaned up. And you can see how much easier that slides through compared to when we took it apart. So we'll pop the wheel back in the bike. To always remember guys, you must grease your spindle. So this is a particularly good quality waterproof grease. So you're never gonna get yourself wet. Don't be shy with it, you know, get it on there and grease the shaft nicely before you slip it through the wheel. So there we go guys, another job complete. Uh, a couple of wheel bearings on the front of the big juke. Went nice and smoothly. Hope you got something out of that. I hope somebody might have learned something, picked up a few tips. And uh, thanks for watching, we'll see you next time. Would you take this job on if you'd seen some lunatic in his garage on YouTube just showing you how to do it? <laughs>